Welcome to part 10 in this UNET tutorial series. And this is going to be a quite an interesting video as well. So I'm going to implement player destruction in this video. And without, well, without adding any more information across the network. So just using the health value, I'm going to implement a destruction, a player destruction that happens across the network and when new players join, so an important objective is that when new players join, they will have the destroyed player in their game, but not visible. So my strategy is to simply disable the player and hide the player's renderers to treat them as a, uh, I guess, a dead player, as a destroyed player, rather than actually destroying them over the network. So this turns out to be quite an efficient method. So you'll be quite impressed, I think, by the end of this video. And in the following video, of course, we'll have the respawn system. So I'll show you how to implement a rather efficient respawn uh, system as well. Okay, so uh, I'll want to, first of all, edit the player health script. And I'm going to then write a new script uh, for the player destruction. Uh, so in my player health script, I'm going to create some new stuff here. Uh, first of all, I'm going to have two new booleans, which I'm going to use like as switches uh, to do stuff. So private bool and should die, I'll call this one, um, is equal to false to begin with. And another boolean, pri uh, sorry, this one I'll call public actually, because I know why, because I need to uh, set it from the destroy script. So public bool uh, is dead is equal to uh, false. Now I'm also going to make use of uh, events. I don't really have to, but uh, well, the, as you can already tell, the, my, my code in general is not that modular and never really will be. It just kind of works, well, usually quite well, but uh, it's not exactly modular. So I'm sort of trying to move a little bit more towards that. I'm not quite perfect at that. So my code does ten, tend to, uh, I guess, call upon other script. My one scripts call another script and do this and do that. Uh, well, that's why that's where doing something like uh, events comes in. So I'll do a public delegate. And if you need to know more about events, uh, I'd suggest that you go watch the Unity uh, tutorial on uh, delegates and then events. So I'm going to create here a delegate called uh, the die delegate. And then I'm going to uh, off that type die, del die gel delegate rather, I'm going to make a variable called event die. So public event die delegate and off the type, oh, well, rather off the variable and the variable's name is event die. And that's it. Okay. So I've got my event there. And now I need to actually, um, I guess, monitor the player's health. And when it's satisfying certain conditions on the server, and I guess on all instances of the game. So that's why I don't need to transmit any more information across the network. I just simply use the health value that's getting nicely synced across the network for me. It, I mean, really couldn't be simpler. This is really, you will be quite impressed. This is actually very, very simple. It's very impressive, actually, uh, what you what you are capable of in this new net, uh, unit a networking system. So then check condition. I'm going to make a new function called check condition. And why don't I type that out immediately? So void check uh, and I will just copy paste that rather than you having to watch me uh, making uh, spelling mistakes all the way. Okay. And uh, for this uh, check condition, I'm now going to make use of my switches and the health value. So if health is less than or equal to zero and is should what did I call it here is dead or should die mm, I wonder if that's logical because I, I just realized you know I'm thinking about it and it didn't make sense to me but whatever now I'll keep to that so should die so and not should die and so it's just the names maybe my method of naming is not consistent enough for me to remember what on earth I was doing and uh, let me put that there. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use these two as switches and you'll see actually probably by the end of the next video, I think once I have the respawn system 
uh, implemented, then you'll kind of understand exactly what I'm doing here. So should die is equal to true. So I set this switch to true. Now when this switch is set to true, and the health condition is also satisfied, so if health, not health text, if health is less than or equal to zero, and probably a bit redundant, I probably don't need to do that, but anyhow, and should die, so with this condition satisfied, I will then say, I'll make use of that event, so if event die, is not equal to null, then that means I should actually call the event. So you'll learn from the Unity tutorial on that, that if you, of course, well, uh, try to call an empty event, you're going to get errors. And I will subscribe to the event in the other script, which is going to be the destroy script, which you'll see uh, in just a moment. Well, not a moment, not too far away anyway. So should die is equal to false now. All right. Uh, so that's a pretty much it for now um, for destroying the player. Uh, so I'm making use of my uh, switches, I guess I would say. And what's going to happen is that when the player's health all across the network, all in remote instances, local player, whatever, it doesn't matter, if the health of this player falls below zero, and that of course happens because of the sync var updating that value from the server across the network, which is wonderful. And then if this, if both of these booleans are false, it means the player isn't dead at the moment and isn't in the state of of getting destroyed, then I should set that should die to true. So I'm just saying, yeah, I've, I've turned this flag on. Then immediately it's going to get picked up that, you know, hey, this thing is true. That means I need to activate this event and then turn off the switch so that it, it doesn't keep repeating. Otherwise the event will keep firing and firing and firing until I respawn the player. And of course that's just, uh, well, that's no good for efficiency anyway. So that's it. Okay, I think I've got everything I need for this script. I just check for errors. I don't think there'll be any. Yep, none. Now I'm going to make a new script. And I guess I will call this one player. Nah, I got no imagination. Player death, I guess. It sounds very grim, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so of course, um, this will be a using unity engine dot networking and then uh, once again using unity engine because I know that uh, like I want to for example I know that when the player uh, you know they're destroyed I want to hide the uh, crosshair dot that's uh, that's in the main scene anyway so I want to disable that I want to hide that so that the, it's very obvious then to the player that you know they've been destroyed so I'm gonna do that so I need to call the UI as well, bring that in. And of course, this has to be a network behavior. Good. And um, I guess uh, now I just put in my variables. I know that I need to call the player health script. So I'm going to make a variable for that. So private health. So that's player health and call it health script. And uh, next, I will, I think... Um, uh, I guess have a reference to the crosshair. Well, that would make sense. Uh, it's an image of the type image and a crosshair uh, image, right? And uh, I guess why not I go to it? If I go to the main menu, just to remind you, uh, there, there it is. That's the crosshair. And what did I name it anyway? So I just left it image. That's rather boring. Why don't I actually give it a good name? Crosshair image. So I know exactly what it is. And why don't I copy that? Because I know I'm about to call that. Am I? Probably. Uh, yeah, surely can't set that. Yes, yeah, so I have to call it by script. And I'm going to say uh, in the start function, which is well, I guess exactly where I should do that, uh, which is crosshair image uh, is equal to a game object dot find. And of course, uh, it's the name that I just copied. And I'm going to also, um, uh, I guess, get the component, right? Get component uh, image. Right. And uh, next, 
I need a reference to the uh, health script, right? So health script uh, is equal to, it's on this same player. Oh, I better remember to attach the script. I want to forget. Uh, get component health, uh, not health script, the health player health class. Uh, and uh, that is it, done. Now I'm actually going to uh, subscribe to that event, but, and I'm going to subscribe, I guess I'm gonna put a function in it. So a function is going to run when that event happens on the player health script. So why don't I make that function? So it's gonna be a void uh, disable player, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And uh, now I will actually call that. So health script, um, I guess, uh, dot event die when that happens. Well, rather, no, not when that happens. Rather, I'm going to subscribe this function uh, to it, disable player. And that's it. That's just how you type it. So yeah, don't put the, the brackets in or you'll get errors and whatever. Anyway, uh, so that's it for that. Now I need to actually... Um, uh, type in the code. Oh, another thing I should do now that I think about it, now that I think about it, because also you'll learn in that Unity tutorial that you should have a, um, a uh, unsubscribe as well to it when uh, the uh, uh, like the script is disabled so that you don't suffer from memory leaks. But I, honestly, I don't think that will happen because when a player leaves the game, in this case anyway, when the player leaves the game, their player game object will be destroyed. But I don't know the deep inner workings of how, well, I guess, the, well, maybe it's the garbage collection is what it's called, how that actually works. So I better just do this, just to be on the safe side, disable player. So that's how I'm unsubscribing the event. Yeah, I really don't think I need to do that at all. It, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, better safe than sorry. Uh, and I already have, oh, why am I doing that? So I already have my function that I need. I don't think I need an update function. Um, I, I, I don't see any reason why I would need that. So I'm going to get rid of that. OK, now for the disabling of the player. Very, very simple. So get component. Uh, it's very simple, you know, the character controller, obviously, I want to get rid of that character controller uh, dot enabled is equal to false. That's the first thing that I really want to do. And then, of course, get components. Um, otherwise, you know, then the, the character will be available for hit detection, which I really don't want. Uh, get component unity standard. Oops, not unit unity standard assets um, dot characters dot first person and dot first person controller uh, and I will say dot enabled is equal to false now the player can't move around and uh, next of course on all the remote players I mean if you logically think about it on all the remote players anyway these things are not going to be enabled well the character controller will be but not the first person controller so it's a bit of a redundant statement uh, apart from the local player uh, anyway it doesn't really matter get component uh, player shoot it's not like this runs very often anyway so it doesn't really matter uh, dot enabled is equal to false and then next um, uh, I want to disable all the renderers so I'm going to actually collect them in an array because there's more than one renderer remember there's a capsule and also the little box thing which I'm using as a pointer to show which way the player is facing so render and an array and I'm just going to call it renderers is equal to get component or rather, no, 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 hold on. Get components in children. That's the one. That's how you get the array. Get components in children. And off the type, renderer, of course. OK, now that I've got it, I'm going to iterate through them. So for each, uh, I guess, renderer, I'm going to make up a variable here. Renderer, let's call it ren in renderers. OK, and I'll iterate. Uh, so as I go through, of course, ren dot enabled is equal to false. Done. All right. Uh, next, I do need, I guess, uh, what do I need? What do I need? Ah, yeah. Better not forget. I have to turn off the health health script dot is dead. Uh, I have to set that to true. 
So that will be much, that will be important later on when I come to respawning. I, I think I'd better just do that now. I know I need to do that just because of the way I'm thinking. I know that I need to do that because I'm going to use it as a switch. So it's going to become a switch later that when the player is dead, what I'm going to say is that their health, if their health is greater than zero and they are currently dead, then to respawn them. And you'll see that in the next video once I've made it. Okay. Uh, all right, so I know I need to do that. I'm going to leave that alone. Next, I'm going to say if is local player. Uh, then in that case, I this should only happen if it's the local player. Then the crosshair dot image, uh, sorry, the dot crosshair dot enabled is equal to false. So disable the crosshair image. Don't want to do that uh, on the remote players, obviously, because whenever you destroy someone, then your crosshair will disappear, which makes no sense at all. And um, I think I'm going to put here a note for myself as well that I need to activate the respawn button. So respawn button needs to appear. So I'm, I probably won't make that in this video, but I know I need to do that. If I don't do that, I'll forget. All right. Um, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I think I should move these these bits of code. Let me go to let me go to that script one of the, my first scripts probably is the first script the network setup script let me see what i actually enabled and disabled here uh -huh. get okay. components dot first person character scene yes that's a little funny actually uh no that is very funny i seem to realize that i have a problem here Mm. Oh, no, I don't. Ah, sorry. I'm just imagining things. For a second, I thought that, oh, wait a minute, I wasn't actually enabling the player shoot script. So surely the remote clients are shooting as well whenever I click, click, press the button. But no, it's not. I have this check. So of course, that's not a problem. Uh, good thing I remembered that. Uh, but why don't I move? It's a good thing I looked at this too. So I can see that this is something I set in is local player. Just to remind me, it's been a while I looked since I looked at that. So why don't I just cut that and put it in its proper place, uh, which is right here. Okay, that's done. That's proper. And uh, the rest of it looks right. Okay, now uh, let me think. Will that actually work? Have I forgotten anything? I don't think I've forgotten anything except to attach it to the player, which I was going to make that mistake again. So I'll go back. Oh, yes, I'll save that because I changed the name of the uh, crosshair image. And I'll uh, drag the player in. And why don't I just get the script and drop that in as well. Player death done. OK, hit apply get rid of the player. Okay. Now something I am going to do, I'm going to go to the network manager, turn off advanced configuration. It's a bit buggy actually. What happens is that if you disconnect and you reconnect, you can't reconnect to the server for some reason. It's just a it's just a bug at the moment. I guess this is a beta beta after all. And use network simulator. I'm going to turn that off now. I'm going to turn that off so that I can have like more than two uh, clients going at the same time. That's really, you, of course, when you build a game, you should, you have to turn that off. You must turn that off. Otherwise, you're going to have uh, problems. All right. Um, so I guess I'm good to go. If I haven't done anything wrong, it should work. All right. Let me run that. Yes, it's fine. Okay, join as a client. Okay, so far so good. Let me see what happens. All right, so I can see this player. If I shoot at them, why don't I move this up so I can see the health? Okay, health is dropping, dropping. There, they're gone. That's it. That worked. So the player got destroyed. Uh, who was it that got destroyed anyway? Uh, so it was player two who got destroyed. Uh, the one here. Now, why don't I, um, I guess, run another copy of that? Let me do that. Let me run another copy and check that when a new player joins, they only see one player in the game. Yes, they do. They only see one player in the game. So the system is working. Well, I guess working. That's it. That's the appropriate term. Uh, and how about I, uh, I guess, disconnect now? 
And why don't I use the editor to help me see things? Okay, so I'm reconnected. There are three players in the game, including, of course, including myself. Who am I? I am player four, right? So let me zoom out here so I can see all the players. So I know exactly, I can see things happen. Yes, I am player four. Who is the player on the box? That is player th three, right? And this is this guy on the box, right? So let me just test, test the health system for shoot that guy once. All right, so it, I shot the editor player. Now, why don't I... Uh, you have to fight with it because I'm not using any cursor lock. Ah. All right, let me increase the size of that window. Nope, that didn't work. Let me get closer. Yeah, okay. That works now. That's better. So if I... In that, okay, there we go. Now I can shoot at the player. So if I shoot at them, gone. All right. So that player is now destroyed, and that player I know was player three, right? So how about I disconnect now? I'll, I'll disconnect with the editor. Disconnect, reconnect. All right. So player three, I can see who's player five. Player five is obviously me, the new player in the editor. Right, that's good. I can see there's one player there, but there is a player three, but he's disabled, which is exactly perfect. Perfect, really perfect. So that's exactly what I hoped for. I couldn't have hoped for a better result. And uh, that's it. So next I need to implement a respawn button. That's really what I have to do next. Um, okay, now there is something else I've noticed. Yeah, just before I go, there is one other thing I've noticed. And that is that the hit detection on the character controller isn't all that great. It's it, you if you try to aim at the top and the bottom, it doesn't quite hit because the character controller doesn't match this capsule that you see here. The shape is a bit narrower. And I thought I could, at first I could fiddle with these radiuses, but then it makes the movement a bit awkward. So I'm going to actually add a collider, a box collider. Yep, a box collider and uh, move in. And, well, I'll just take a guess, really, of what the height of the box collider should be. Why don't I try to... That actually looks about right. Okay, and I'll put on is trigger. Done. So now, hit detection will be very... will work very well. The player won't feel like they're missing the player when they're trying to shoot at the player. Oops, now there is something else I need to do. No, I, I quit that. I have to come back here to the disable player, and I need to turn off uh, the box collider, definitely. So I should come back here, and just under this, I'll just say get component. Yeah, very important. So box collider, otherwise the when other when players are shooting at the dead player, it'll hit the box collider and register a hit pointlessly. Uh, and it won't block, it'll block the ray cast as well. So the player will be shooting at another player and wonder how, how come it's not going through. So I definitely don't want that to happen. So okay, good. So now I'm disabling the box collider. Done. Okay. Now I can build and run. And just test that it works without any problems. Okay. Uh, come back here. Start a host. Move that up. Join as a client. Okay. Good. Excellent. Now if I shoot at the top there. I'll see that. Whoops, there we go. That's it. It's working nice. I can move a little bit to the edge and it still hits just fine. Excellent. Really excellent. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. As you can see, um, I've used an event basically to subscribe to, uh, well, uh, to have this function uh, subscribe to the event so whenever it happens uh, then all this code runs and I did it without having the player health script talk directly to the player death script which makes my code a bit more modular perhaps more friendly to changing uh, later down the line 
but of course my code isn't perfect so it it isn't entirely modular because you can see that i'm still referring to the health script in some way so i have to take into account that if i change the script then i need to update this some parts of the script too for example if i change that variable name or something like that but more importantly what you did just see in this video is that i did not add a single additional network call whatsoever there is no sort of command or RPC or something like that, or a sync event, uh, a sync, yeah, it's basically like a sync var, but a sync event, event at all to implement the player destruction, which is very, very impressive, actually, that you can actually implement such a thing with UNET. It's very impressive. And that is because of this sync var and the way it works. So I can say that I can really say that I'm very impressed with this system. And you will see that when I come to respawning, that I will only use a single command and it will work. All right, so that's enough for this video. Thank you for watching.